Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. We have something unusual on the bench and that is a P.O. Box uh, lock. And as you can see they're different. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Five pins. They've got this um, part here, it's held on by a circlip. And um, we're going to be changing the key on this one. We've got a, a pre-cut key already so we're good there. So now we're just going to open it up and um, make the key. So what I can see is this little part here is connected to the plug. So that's interesting. Uh, we have a circlip on the back, and that's fine. I thought the easiest way is probably just to shim it open. So let's remove that, um, that part on the plug first. Because we won't be able to rotate the plug around or remove the plug. Okay. Now one of the things I noticed with this is uh, we've got some key blanks. Here's a key blank. Here's one here. And I thought I had another one here. I thought I had enough. Oh yeah, we do. So the key number for this is LK21. That's the Ilco number. Silka number is, uh, ooh, now I'm thinking, LW21R, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong. And we have um, C13, and that's an Edmonds. So three different numbers there just to correspond. Now, what I also noticed is with this one is that a C4R would actually fit into this as well. C4R. The difference between this key and the standard key is that a standard key actually works on its shoulder, which is right there. So you push that in and that's its shoulder. With this key here, the shoulder is actually part of the head of the key, so it slides all the way in. And you can see there that once it slides all the way in, you're picking up all five pins. Yeah, five. Uh, there is a six pin there. I'm not sure if it's used or not. Could be. There's another one right about there, so most likely it is. So the difference between this and a normal key is quite significant, which meaning that it's a little bit harder to pick, because if you were to look at a pick gun needle, pick gun needle you can reach all the pins. With this one here, you're not quite reaching them all. So yes, it is pickable, but, you know, will it take longer than shimming? Most likely. I'll give it a quick pick and we'll just see how we, how we go here. Let's see if my pick gun needle will actually reach that far. I've got my piece of shim here anyway, because I'm, I'm guessing that I'm going to probably be shimming it. Anyway, probably not getting the right angle. Alright, let's go with shimming it. Let's take off this circlip. Need some circlip pliers, good ones preferably. A bit crappy, but that'll do. All right, one circlip off in my vice. Got my key blank. So we can provide this service. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want. If you've got um, multiple PO boxes and you want new keys for them, that's not a problem. We can uh, recode them and give you three new keys. Generally, it's done each time a uh, somebody uh, moves out of a P.O. box. Okay, so three. Moving on the fourth now. So the spacing and depth most likely will, well, they will be different. I'm not too sure on the spacing and depth which ones they use, but most likely it will just be an Insta code. You look up the key blank, look up the space and depth, put your key in lining it up from the head of the key which is that funny shoulder which is different to different to a lot of, a lot of others there we go oh, we just uh <laughs> just dropped it undesirable oh look at that i haven't i haven't dropped my um top pins i'm just going to pop that down there and grab myself a follower and for some reason all my followers have been removed from my bench which really really annoys me and sucks Yep, not one follower. Okay, just bear with me while I grab a follower. Not one follower. Alright, we'll have to use this one. Okay, so I did drop two of the front pins, as you can see there. Um, my shim is still actually holding the, the top pins, so I'm good there. Okay, so I'm going to keep my top pins loaded. And there we are there. Have a look at that bad boy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, six, yes, seven. Seven, uh, seven pins. And it looks like all seven are used. Okay, that's interesting. 
all seven are used, which meaning that would have seven top pins in it. All right, so I'm just going to uh, dump all my pins. These are going to be standard uh, Lockwood pins, so I'm not going to have too much trouble. I'm going to go with my pre-cut here and start to gauge them. Got a massive one at the front. Wow, a nine at the front. See, I'd never normally put a nine in the front because what happens is that the key gets a little bit weaker at that point and it can be broken. Well, I, I think it can be, you know, more broken. Somebody can break that key a little bit easier. Just preference. Okay, two down. So I'm noticing some big, big cuts in this pre-cut. Maybe I should have picked another one. By all rides, it'll be fine. Just loading up all seven pins. If it's got seven pins, we'll use all seven. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna whack a little bit of graphite. This is just a trick that I do. Let's put a bit of graphite right on the shear line because it's a good place for it to start to disperse from. Okay, I'm going to put that there and I'm going to do a quick check. I'm going to make sure that they've top pinned. Yes, one, two, three, yes. I've got three on that side. Two, three, and four. Whoop. I just popped the fourth one out, which sucks because now I've got to normally uh, if you're lucky you can hold them all in check them and then push them back down I got through to three uh, I got through to the fourth one and the fourth one just jumped off so of course now I've got to do those four top pins which is not really a problem I've got a spring in that one two I have to put the spring back and this is that magnetic thing that I just really hate when things get magnetic. Okay, lucky last. Okay. Making sure I put it back in the right way. Not letting it separate. And done. Okay, now we try this key. Oop. We turned it too far because normally it has that uh, that bit of brass on there and that's turning good. Let's put that piece of brass back on there now before we go too far because if we uh, turn it too far we're going to drop pins. It does have a quick change underneath. I mean it is possible to do it. Remove this, remove the cylinder, remove this piece of brass, flip the key all the way around, pop the pins out but if you're going to go to that much you might as well just use a follower and do it you know, the, the normal way. Okay. Make sure those little screws are in there nice and tight. Using a good screwdriver. Okay, now the test. So we're going to put the up, upside down, test it. Try to put the key in the wrong way. Okay, key moves good. So if I can do it upside down, that means all the pins are pushing up to the shear line just fine. We'll try it this way. And that's it. You put the key in, it moves that little bit of brass that much. And that's all it does. Okay, so that's a Australia Post mailbox lock recoded. Uh, if you do need these recoded, just reach out to us. Uh, I'll probably put a link in the description and we can recode them, send them out with three new keys. Then you can simply just replace them when people move in and out of the mailbox. It might be cheaper than buying a whole new cylinder. I know at the moment um, they generally just supply a whole new cylinder. And the problem is with that is that, you know, you're buying a new cylinder each time when you could just re recode the original cylinder and use that. I mean being a piece of brass uh, it doesn't get much use. Let's see if come back. So this cylinder here I reckon you know you can get 20-30 years out of this. I mean that one there has been used for 15, 15 years plus and it looks almost brand new. You know now it's, uh, now it's got a key I'm going to cut a couple more keys for this and then give it back to its owner and we should be job done. And when cutting the key of course uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be lining up from this shoulder as compared with this key here, I'd normally line up from this shoulder, but I'm going to be using this right here in this edge. And you can see the difference in the length of the key there. So it's a C4R or LW4R, and that's the LW 
21 are. So, okay, leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching.